Oh hey what's up you guys how's it going it's Papa and today we're going to be taking a look at my Invoke Eldritch deck that I am playing for the current January format. I've been doing some testing with it online. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean it's good and it's bad but it's good mainly because you know it's considered meta but it's also bad because it is considered meta. I usually play unmeta decks so I usually play like Doki and Furanoid basically decks that aren't really seen in today's format. I think Invoked Eldritch is basically a sleeper deck. I mean, everyone is playing Eldritch right now, so I've just been toying with the Invoked Engine with it. It plays no Dogmatica cards, it plays no Zodiac cards, it's just Invoked and Eldritch. It does play Dragoon, so you have to find the bitter evil between the two somewhere. So I went with Invoked, Eldritch, Dragoon. But you're not here to hear me talk, let's go ahead and look at some cardboard, shall we? Okay, let's go ahead and get into the deck profile, shall we? So starting off with the deck, we play two copies of Eldritch the Golden Lord. I mean, what can I really say? Gold rare, golden boy. Everyone should know what this card does by now. It's really key in the format because if you're going to be playing a controlled deck, Eldritch is probably the best way to go. I know this isn't the most competitive build of Eldritch that's out there, but I do play the Invoked Engine with it. So I do play three copies of Alistair. I really do like Alistair with the Eldritch Engine. I do think it's very key when you want to play more control. So you could honestly play Zodiac if you want to. Arguably, that's probably the better version of Eldritch Control. I mean, pure Eldritch, it's okay, but I'd rather have an engine with it. But I don't have any of the Zodiac cards. Hell, these Eldritch cards aren't even mine either. They're my roommates. Good looking out. For some extra bodies in the deck, I do play one copy of Korobane and one copy of Candina. We are playing the Trickstar engine because we do play Dragoons and we want to be able to access Dragoons as fast as possible. So having the Candina and the Korobane helps you get to your Dragoon faster, and then ending on a Dragoon with a Mechaba is pretty crazy, and then just having some trap cards in the background, why not? But that's it for like the real monsters of the deck. I play a very small hand trap lineup. I do play three copies of Ash Blossom, just because it's the most generic, and then two copies of Ghost Bell. I don't like three. I think three clogs too much. I think two is fine. I mean, th three Ash is different because we're playing Purgatrio in the extra deck. So I feel it's best to have maxed out on Ash Blossom over the Purgatrio, but I think having only two Haunted Mansion, it's fine. That's it for the Hand Traps, and then for the last two bricks in the monster lineup, we play the One Dark Magician and the One Red Eyes because we are playing Dragoon. So that's it for the monster lineup, everything else is just spells and traps. For spells, I play three copies of Curse Eldland. I haven't paid eight and felt great since Cleave format. Being able to pay 800 and then search yourself an Eldland card, it's really good. What can I say there? And then one copy of Light Stage because we want to be able to access our Trickstar engine. And then Light Stage going second just locks out back row, prevents you prevents, prevents your opponent from activating cards like Salt and Strike, Torrential Tribute, or even Eldritch cards depending on what you're playing against. And then for the other field cells, I play three copies of Magical Meltdown because we're trying to get to Alistair and we don't want our fusion summons to go uninterrupted. So three meltdown for that. I do play two copies of Invocation. You could arguably play three or you could play one, but I think two is fine. I don't play Desires or anything, but I want to be able to open it in case my Alistair gets stopped by like a Gamma or like an Ash. Whatever it may be, I want to be sure to end on a Mechaba turn one as much as possible. So having the Invocation helps there. And then fun fact, if you open up Red Eyes or Dark Magician, you can inch you can Invocation for Dragoon because it does act as a poly. And then the last two of spells, I play two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. I mean, it should be pretty self-explanatory why I'm playing Cyclone. It's very key in the format because we are in a much slower format and having the Cyclones to get rid of pesky back row. And then I only play two one of spells. I play the one Terraforming and the one Red Eyes Fusion. I don't play the Eldixir spell. I don't have it, but Honestly, I haven't missed it too much. You could get away with playing it if you want. This card is, or this deck is already 41 cards, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It's either 41 or 40. But if you want to play the Eldixir spell, then you can. I just don't have it, and it's all self-preference. Yeah, guys, that's the spell lineup. For traps, we play three copies of Eldixir of Sanguine because we're trying to summon out our Golden Boy. Three copies of Conquistador because I hear Dryden is a pretty cool card. And only two Hakiero. You see this in a lot of people's decks. I mean, you could play three if you want. I just think the two is fine. And then the last two traps I play in the deck, I do play 
two copies of Solemn Strike, the best card going first and going second. But yeah guys, that's it for the main deck. Sorry, I lied, that's not it for the main deck. The last three traps I played in the deck was three copies of Needle Ceiling. Yeah, I played three copies of Needle Ceiling, I just forgot to put it in the bottom of my deck because it was feeling kind of low, but yeah, this is the 38th, 39th, and 40th card. You could do Torrential, you could do Imperm, I just like Needle Ceiling because it catches everyone off guard, but it's all self-preference and yeah, that's really it. So moving on to the extra deck. For the extra deck, I play two copies of Invoked Makaba. Shouldn't come as a surprise. You don't need three. You could play three if you want. There's just some room in the extra deck because I'm missing a couple cards, but I don't like proxying, and I know a lot of people don't like seeing proxy cards in deck profiles, so I don't want to be that person. So two is fine. Uh, one Invoked Purgatrio because it's just not worthy playing multiple copies of it. And then I play one Invoked Ragin. I do play Droll in the side deck, so that's why the Ragin is in here. I don't have the Olenoidus, I can't find mine. I'm really organized with my cards, but I just can't find that one for some reason. But if you have the other guy, go ahead and use him. But since I can't find mine, I'm just playing the Ragin. And then for other fusions, I play the one copy of Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. You don't need multiple copies. This is your big boss monster of the deck. So one Dragoon. And then I play some Dogmatica targets. I play the Entis with the Nova. Shouldn't really come as a surprise why I played these two. I mean, when you send your Entis, you get a pop, and then your Nova will go ahead and summon out your Mechaba, and then you just have a free negate. And then I do play Consolar Pallades because I do get into those situations where I have multiple trap cards out or trap monsters out on the field, and then you just overlay for Pallades. It's a really good card. I don't get why a lot of people aren't playing this anymore in their Eldritch decks because this card's really good. And then I play the Link Spider because everything's normal, or your Eldritch trap cards are normal. I play the one copy of Artemis. This is the new one card Makaba combo. You just link your Alistair off into the Magistus and then you have your Makaba from there. So playing her, she's all right. I kind of missed the other two, but she's good. And then one Anaconda because we're playing Dragoon. Uh, one Phoenix and Unicorn for stability. I mean, they're the best generic links in the game probably. And then I play the one copy of Access Code Talker as well. And this is debatable, you don't need to play this, but I play a Boral Sword Dragon. I just like having multiple outs in the extra deck for certain cards, and I think Boral Sword is just better. I was debating this and Boral Load. If you have the tanks, like the uh, Gustav Max and the other guy, I'd suggest playing those. But since I don't have those, I'm just playing the Boral Sword, because again, I don't want to proxy cards. And it's been working out really well online. But that's it for the extra deck. Moving on to the side deck real quick. For the main monsters, I play three copies of Nibiru and three copies of Droll and Lockbird. You activate a Droll against a Jarton player. Most of the time, their turn kind of just ends. Same with a Zodiac player or Zodiac, Zodiac player. If you Droll them, they kind of just lose from there as well. We are also playing two copies of Alpha. I don't play Pankratops in this side deck. I just think the two Alpha is fine. I do like the versatility between the two cards, but... I just think having the alpha is good. I didn't have a lot of space in the side deck anyway for cards that I wanted to play. Debatably, you could take out Droll and play some other cards that you want, like maybe Torrential, maybe um, Droll, or not Droll and or maybe Pankertops, but it's all self-preference. For spells, I play one Harpy's Feather Duster because back row sucks, and three copies of Book of Moon. Shouldn't have to explain this one too much. This card is really crazy, this format. Being able to sub Zodiac from comboing off and then Hell, you could stop Dryton, you could stop basically whatever. I mean, it's not once per turn, and this card is just iconic. And the last three cards I play in the deck is three copies of Infinite Impermanence because sometimes you just want that extra negation. But yeah, guys, that's it for the deck profile. And yeah, guys, that's it. So thank you for looking at this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is something different. It is like kind of more on the meta side. I am missing cards like Lightning Storm, cards like Ice Dragon's Prison, and like evenly match I guess and droplets I don't have any of those cards I don't plan on getting any of them until we resume regular play they're just a little more on the price side and I'm not down for that so I mean if we're not having any in-person events sure you can do remote duels but I usually just like to play online or I like to play in person so I don't plan on getting any of those cards until we go back to regionals or YCS play so don't expect any of those cards to be seen on my channel unless they're online but i don't like online deck profiles because nobody watches them yeah guys so hope you enjoyed this video please like favorite comment subscribe for more 
and check out the description where you can see all my social media links. And until next time, guys, this has been Papa, and I will catch you all in my next video. Take care, everyone.